All right, I think I have the tankiness figured out. I gave up on Blood Notch. I was running up here and grabbing these two bad boys and getting this so I can use Blood Notch. The stun is based off energy shield, and then I was running up and grabbing Eldridge battery, and that's why I was taking this large cluster jewel. Now that I've given up on Blood Notch, and I kind of figured I don't really need it with this uh, amulet, and with uh, Progenesis, I kind of don't think I need that. So I was able to path all the way out of there, which allowed me to pop in a couple medium cluster jewels, which I just grabbed a couple chaos ones. And then I also grabbed this bad boy here for one divine. When channeling, I have a chance to gain an endurance charge, which doesn't last very long, so those aren't up very often. But I got an exploding node, which helps a ton. And then this one gives me alchemist genius. Then I had to get this one over here to get my life. Then I got this right here to get immunity to uh, poison. Now I get hit with bleed and not poison. Um, I guess it doesn't really matter that between the two of these. I should level these up all the way. But I usually don't do that until I'm like fully satisfied with the build. And I am not quite fully satisfied with this build. And I just leveled this Pathfinder. So now I have a juicy little map in here. Uh, 39% pack size, corrupted, 100% delirious. Now let's see if I can do the objective of this build, which is to corral giant groups of enemies and then throw a rage vortex in those enemies' faces. That is the purpose of this build. Wanted it to be fast, tanky, and apply a ton of wither and poison. Never was really stacking poison, but now I'm kind of stacking poison. I cast when damage taken, however, is not level high enough to be able to use my my guard skill. So I need to level that up a bit. Got a pretty good little group here. Let's get to a, a 50 rage. Rage vortex. have Vol Cyclone up, we'll get a bigger group, like this, do a Rage Vortex and a Vol Cyclone. Sucks them all into one spot, I missed the Rage Vortex, and then they all explode from the exploding node. Seems I'm tanky enough that I'm not dying that frequently on a 100% Delirious map. Ian don't even have a guard skill. Come on guys, let's all join together. Hold hands in a yeehaw club. Cyclone. Run out of my freaking rage vortex, you jerk. That is a big old pack. Get 
that ball cyclone up. It's getting close. There we go. Rage Vortex. Ball cyclone. Oh, that is a bunch of bombs. I cannot believe I survived that. Alright, <laughs> tankiness is kind of working. I think I have enough life where I can put vitality on an arrogant support setup. I also forgot to put a dash skill on. One of the big defensive layers I added was I just switched uh, Determination for Grace. Determination didn't seem like it was really doing much, and Grace is doing everything. Oh, this build is fun. Not the strongest build, obviously, but building a build that's too strong wouldn't allow this big pack size to really be visible. I ran a couple big pack size maps with my self cast Exsanguinate. Not just killing everything too fast, so you couldn't really see just how big the packs could get. So, this right here is the successful version that I've been going for. So far. I mean, I was able to do all this yet and I haven't died. I don't like that my Cyclone is a 4 link though. I might put the Cyclone on the 6 link and the Rage Vortex on a 4 link. I got a pair of boots that have level 15 uh, increased duration on the boots, which would be real nice for Rage Vortex. I'm gonna throw those Rage Vortexes out and keep increase that duration. I have three endurance charges, so the channeling was working pretty good. Okay, let's uh, clean this up. There's too many enemies. Rage Vortex. See, the Rage Vortex dud it out. So I got stunned. Rage Vortex. Fall Cyclone. Suck them up and blow them up. It's been a while since I used Fall Cyclone. It's usually too dangerous. You use Fall Cyclone and then you're just dead. on here. What do we got? Enfeeble, vulnerable. Less accuracy. I should be leeching. My leech is just super weak, I guess. Don't think I want to fight this guy, but maybe I can blow up enough guys on him. Just whiffed it again. Didn't throw the Rage Vortex. Yeah, it's not worth it. Don't quite have the damage to fight those kind of bad boys. If I can get him to follow, but that guy sucks at following the leader. Oh, Batman. AoE would be nice. I don't have any AoE, but it would be real nice for these pops.
I can kill this guy. He won't take too long. And by won't take too long, he's gonna take a very long time. <laughs> That punishment will kick in shortly. My flasks aren't quite up to scuff to where they're up at all times. When I'm mapping, they're up at all times. I still gotta grab a couple of things in order. I thought how Genius Alchemist or whatever that's called would do it, but it hasn't done it. I'm guessing punishment doesn't work with bleed. That's my guess. And by bleed, I mean poison. But if it doesn't work with poison, it doesn't work with bleed, so statement works either way. This game's weird like that. It'll say it takes 50% increased damage, which is what determin uh, punishment says, I'm pretty sure. But taking increased damage doesn't necessarily mean taking increased poison damage. This game's weird like that. It might, but I'm not positive. All depends on where it puts that in the stack. Staying and fighting this guy was a waste of time. He better give me the best loot he's ever given anyone. Fifteen simulacrum. Not worth it. Mostly because it wasn't fun. Unlike this right here, which is just great fun. Just suck them up. Suck them up and fuck them up. Just like Mama always told me. It makes me sound a little bit on the, uh, on the gay side, but I'll, I'll run with it. Suck him up and fuck him up. Let's see if I can if I got enough damage to get this bad boy going. I might. I don't. Yeah, maybe. Well, bottom line, I'm pretty sure this is the best Rage Vortex Pathfinder in Path of Exile right now. Just saying. Come on, you annoying guys. I have all Cyclones almost ready. Now I'm kind of not enthused to use it on these guys anymore. There we go. Let's get a bigger pack. I don't want to waste it. And this is why I wanted that AoE. Oh, perfect. That was a perfect showing. Hit the Rage Vortex and Vol Cyclone right on top of it. I 
I don't know how to tell how many wither stacks are on them. Unlike power charges, doesn't really show it. At least I can't see it. Maybe if I zoom in. Ah, it's hard to tell. I can't I can't tell anything. Pack size, 123%. Map choice, not very good. I remember liking race course. I think I just liked it because you can run through it super fast with Cyclone. It's not a very dense map. Follow along, boys. All right, we got a pretty big group here. Rage Vortex, Fall Cyclone, Papa Roonies. I have my uh, my 100% delirious farmer. It's slow, but uh, I very much enjoy it. It's only gonna get stronger once my cast when damage taken levels up and my guard starts to trigger. I don't have another cast when damage taken. Nope. I'd have to go to a different character and grab it. But I can. Da -da -da. Cast when damage taken. Oh, my molten shell is not level 20. As I was gonna say, I could level up my molten shell. I'll just put a different molten shell on. Buy a new one. And yes, I know, I have plenty of cash. I could just buy a molten shell. But, uh... I don't wanna. I don't wanna open the trade window. And I also could've put a movement skill on. But you know what? I, I forgot. Defenses are pretty solid without using determination. Well, not on this map. This map obviously has something that's uh, ruining my armor. Or ruining my physical damage mitigation.
One of these guys has got to be bleeding me. I'm not bleed immune anymore. DPS? Maybe? I hate calculating DPS with Rage Vortex, so I usually just don't do it. Yeah, that, whatever that is, is damage over time. So it's good, but it's not quite good enough. It does it with the pretty good survival rating, but I think needs a hair more damage now. Now that I have the defenses up to scuff, I gotta work on the damage. This is the body armor I'm using. I've had this guy sitting around for a while. It's pretty strong body armor. It's got the double of Fizz's elementals, but then it's also got a lot of life. And then uh, two to maximum fire, and then all res, and I have an all res here. So it makes for a pretty tanky setup. It looks like my chaos isn't very high, but once you pop the potion, it goes up to cap. And obviously, you got full avoidance of all ailments. Uh, only 28 stun avoidance. I can get more stun avoidance, which would be pretty nice. Immune to poison. Uh, I was gonna roll plus one to rage on hit with this bad boy. Instead of... But then I hit chaos damage over time multiplier. And I figure, you know, I might as well... Uh, might as well use that bad boy. Actually, I'll leave it up to fate. I'll end... This section of this video, I'm going to concatenate it with the next one, I think. But uh, I'm going to leave it up to fate. And let us unpredictably strengthen one. And then lower the other. It's going to strengthen the chaos damage over time. And it's going to remove the accuracy. Son of a bitch. Okay. I, I don't really want the accuracy, but I'm going to do it again. There we go. Now what are they? Lesser and grand back to where they used to be. Here we go, one more. Son of a bitch. It was supposed to make my decision to re-roll it easier by pumping that one of them to high levels. But it didn't do it. I'm disappointed. Keeps giving me the accuracy. Alright. That's it for now. I'm gonna respec it just a little bit. Alright, I respect a little bit. I've been working on this one for a while. I found this weapon. It had the damage multiplier, the fire, and the cold. I was able to smash on the lightning and the attack speed and then craft a chaos damage over time multiplier now, i'm not sure chaos damage over time multiplier is the strongest one to do but uh, out of my options i think it's probably the best i already have the attack speed flat chaos damage obviously is not going to be better than multiplier um, i don't have a lot of crit chance or crit multi so i don't want to do crit multi Drinking my delicious tea. Uh, so then we got uh, Chaos Multiplier, which I think is, I mean, maybe double damage, but I don't think double damage applies to poison. I'm doing quite a bit of poison now. Um, I've respected a little bit to do more poison. So I'm using this weapon instead of the other unique one, because unique weapons are almost always weaker than rare weapons that are well rolled. And this isn't even well rolled. The lightning damage is tier 3, the fire damage is tier 3, and the cold damage is tier 4. If I can pump those numbers up to tier 1, even for a couple, the damage would be huge. So this weapon, while uh, good, it's not great. It's not a great weapon, it's a good weapon. 
And I'm just pairing that with the shield to give me plus two to maximum all resistance to try to get me a little bit more tanky. Because the objective here is to play this as if it's a greater wit greater rift in Diablo 3. And I think I have it. I think I have created what I wanted to create. So let's run this map and let's just pretend that we now live in a world that is Diablo 3 running greater rifts. Oh, this map is terrible for what I want to show. You corral enemies in a big circle. Like so, just like you did in Diablo 3 with Greater Rifts. If anyone played Diablo 3 and remembers Greater Rifts, throw your Rage Vortex, Ball Cyclone, you suck all the enemies up, you kill them all, you don't die. The don't dying is a big part because if you die, then it's kind of pointless. Um, all the extra tankiness and the void of damage because I don't do a lot of damage. I don't really care too much about damage because I'm going to suck everybody up and then they're all just going to blow up together. So getting a lot of damage isn't as beneficial for this type of a play style as getting a lot of tankiness. Which I believe I now have a lot of tankiness. Took me a bit to get there, but I believe I am there. Group them up. I guess I'm not going to wait for my ball cyclone. They're almost all dead anyways. And again, this is a 100% deli map with 117% increased pack size on this map. It's not my juiciest map. My juiciest is still 146. But uh, the build is coming together pretty nicely. Now, is this the best way to use original sin? Oh, hell no. But it is fun. Pop your Rage Vortex, you hit Vol Cyclone, and it just sucks them up and kills them. It's pretty damn fun. I enjoy this playstyle a lot. It reminds me of pushing greater rifts in Diablo 3, which was basically the only thing to do in Diablo 3, and I very much like pushing greater rifts. And the damage is good enough, I should be able to kill this fat boy. Well, this Kosalik. He's not the fat boy, he's the other guy. If I could actually see him. There he is. Um, I could kill him, but I'm not gonna. It's gonna take too long. I ain't got that kind of time. He ain't worth it. Raid Vortex, small Cyclone. Almost died. Uh, it has reduced regeneration rate on this map. As you can see, I am not gaining a lot of life. In fact, I think it might be better to pop uh, Vitality and go lower on the maximum life. Maybe. I'm always torn between having Vitality on there or not. I am just hard stunned. I will be dead if I can't teleport out of here. Oh, I teleported out, but I died at the last second. I have a little bit of stun avoidance, but obviously... That stun avoidance is not enough because of the stun length. So it might be beneficial to put on that stun jewel, even though um, I don't wanna. I really don't wanna, but I think I'm gonna. Actually, I'll just do it next time. I'll, I'll go find a jewel that has stun. I gotta get immune to stun, actually. Let's just do that. It's annoying because I'm only benefiting from the stun, but we'll do that and I won't get stunned. It's unlocked anymore. I thought I could do it with just a little bit of stun avoidance, but because I'm literally being hit by every enemy on the damn planet, um, the stun avoidance doesn't mean anything, as you saw. back at him. Rage Vortex, Ball Cyclone. And that's the combo. Exactly what I wanted. It took a while to get there, but I got there. I don't want any of those. Corral the masses. Let my Ball Cyclone build up. 
Raid Vortex, Vol Cyclone. Corral the masses. Rage Vortex, Vol Cyclone. Oh, that is, that is glorious. I love it. Absolutely love it. This is the way I like to play. This might be... I might like playing this way. Obviously you can't do all content with this build. There's virtually no bossing available. But if you want to do 100% Delirious maps, I can't think of a build that is more fun than this. I, I just can't. A build or a setup, you get just these super juicy maps. Oh yeah, I had to throw a Rage Vortex. You gotta pay attention there. I'm not sure I have quite the damage to pump those up. Uh, that could be scorched. Why not? Oh, look at how many enemies there are. Rage Vortex, Vol Cyclone. Blink around while Vol Cyclone's going. Rage Vortex, Vol Cyclone. And you might ask yourself, how the hell are you surviving those giant Vol Cyclones and not dying? I have some secret tech that I, I don't think anyone is using. And it's extremely strong for this setup. It's extremely strong for this setup. I can't even describe to you how strong it is. Aside from saying, it's the cat's pajamas. And I'll show you after I kill this fat man. Actually, I don't even need to show you, let's talk about it. There's a new node that you have a 15% chance to gain 200 life on hit. I'm grabbing that node because Cyclone's attack speed is so high. That that 15% chance to get a hit, if you look at my life, it is very common. I am getting that a ton. A ton. Finish up the fat man. Let's go fat man. Especially when I got Rage Vortex going and Cyclone. You see my, my health just popping. All right. That node is right here. 15% chance to gain 200 life on hit with attacks. It seems like lame duck sauce, but let us take a look at Cyclone. Cyclone, where you at? This bad boy has 11.36 attacks per second. 13 with my flask up. It might even go higher with some other bonuses that I'm gaining. And if it is a 15% chance to gain 200 life, and I'm hitting 13 times in one second, you can do the math how much life I'm gaining. It's a lot. And that's for one enemy. And when Cyclone's hitting multiple enemies, I am just pumping that life up a ton. Just buckets. Buckets of life. I don't want to fight you. You're annoying. This build is not designed to fight you. This build is designed to group enemies, throw a Rage Vortex, and a Vol Cyclone. Rage... I can't even see anything. I don't know if I... I got my Rage Vortex off. It's kind of hard to tell sometimes. So you throw the Rage Vortex and you Cyclone around it, and uh, it's it's great. The enemies just follow you around, and if you're lucky enough, you can. The Rage Vortex sometimes just slightly moves, so you don't always get the perfect. But if you can ball Cyclone right on top of that Rage Vortex and just pull everyone into the Rage Vortex, it is not only effective, 
It is so satisfying and so fun. It is the way to play the game. It is awesome. It is spectacular. Now, if your objective is do damage, get loot, and you don't really care about having fun while playing the game, this ain't the build for you. This is all about the fun factor. If you're playing this game to have fun, this is a very, very fun way to play the game. It's very much like Diablo 3, and the best part about Diablo 3 was the Greater Rifts, and you play this just like you play Greater Rifts. Gotta drink my tea faster, it's getting cold. Oh, I didn't have enough rage. I should have stacked up my rage before coming in here. I'm not even gonna do anything. these guys to stack up a little rage before I head in there. Who is this boss? Oh, this guy. I did a- I didn't realize it was a pit of Chimera. I just grabbed one that was 100% delirious. Yeah, I run around running maps normally. And then when I get a map that ha is well rolled, and by well rolled I mean has big pack size, then I hit it with 10 of those uh, delirium orbs, and then I corrupt it to try to get into the 40 range to just get these just beefcake maps. One of the benefits of this build is I can run Reflect Elemental, and I used to be able to run Reflect Fizz when I had Void Forge, which was the point of getting Void Forge, but. Without Void Forge, I can no longer run Reflect Physical because I'm doing... How much physical damage am I doing? I'm doing some physical damage. Uh, physical damage, where are you? Maybe I'm not doing any physical damage? I don't see physical damage. I'm being hit, so you know, they're being annoying. So I only had one death on the map, and that's because I got stun lock. And once I put stun uh, avoidance on, the stun lock went away, which is great. Or the stun pantheon. I don't really want to fight this boss, but because it's a pit of Chimera, I'm going to fight this boss. There you are, bad boy. Now I should run without the movement speed flask to get another flask, but I don't really think I need it. The movement speed flask is working. Let's me run around with the chicken and I corral them a little better. It's like a golden corral with this shit. Did he hide in his cloud again? I didn't know he could do that multiple times per phase. Usually I kill him so quickly. I like that you can frost blink while while cycloning. It's pretty great. Do these open after you kill them, or do they just perpetually open? Oh, well, looks like they're perpetually open. Looks like you don't have to kill anybody, so you can just kind of pack them together. Obviously, that's what I like to do. Little goat herder. I'm literally a goat herder right now. <laughs> Why you gotta be a fucking idiot all the time? Can't just be a normal person. You always gotta be a dumbass. Goat herder.
Now I think the ultimate version of this build actually doesn't use Rage Vortex. I don't know what it uses instead of Rage Vortex, but it uses a claw. Claws seem to be very well designed for this because you can do Nightblade support and then turn on the uh, Perfect Agony and really get that poison going. But I want to use Rage Vortex, so I'm using a, a, a sword. And I tried for the longest time to craft one of those uh, heist swords that convert your physical damage to a random element, which with original sin would always just be convert your physical to chaos. But man, I could not get a good roll on that. I tried with all of my currency, all of my essence, and I could not get a good craft. I got some that were okay but they weren't better than the unique Vol item that I had that just stacks every damage type on it. I forget what it's called already. And if you can't do better than that, then, you know, why even try? And I'm pretty sure this is better. I haven't checked the, the POB numbers, but this feels better. Getting that multi really helps with the poison. Before I was trying to do just flat damage, I popped a 100% poison on there simply because it added 40% more damage. But now my poison is probably close, close to like 80% of my damage. So it went from 40% to 80%. I don't think this can do 100% simulacrum. It can do 100%, I mean not 100%, I don't think it can do level 30 simulacrums. Not only because the damage is a little too low, but uh, I'm pretty sure those big fat boys will hit me with physical damage that will wreck my socks off. Because I got some pretty good physical defenses, but my armor's a little bit low because I'm no longer using determination, I'm using grace instead. Grace is uh, the superior product. I've tested them both, and using Grace instead of Determination is superior. But I got this shield here with a lot of armor on it. And uh, that's the only armor I have. I have Evasion. Oh, I have armor on the body armor as well, which is really good body armor that I have, which is also getting 11% of physical as elemental. And I'm getting 6% here as elemental. So I am mitigating some of that physical, but it's not enough. A beautiful commenter finally explained to me because you know I don't really watch videos or look at other people's pops or go to POE Ninja for the most part I, I check out a couple dream cores videos always up on the latest latest mathel but beyond that I, I typically don't watch too many videos that other people put out so I didn't really fully understand exactly why sometimes you have no armor like you have no physical mitigation and apparently there's a mod that reduces your phys physical mitigation level and this is my biggest complaint, well, my, probably my second or third biggest complaint with GGG's development style is they really developed this game to specifically remove your primary defense, no matter what builds you're doing, they remove your primary defense, making everything you've done to build that primary defense completely useless so you can die. They force the game to be able to kill almost anyone in the right circumstance which is a bit annoying, and I don't think I like it. I understand where they're going. They want to keep it edgy. But without the rapid ability to identify these mobs that are going to kill you, it's pretty silly. I think it was Ben. I think that's the, the really good player who wins everything and is, like, really good at making builds and min-max and shit. He had a Pathfinder build that was completely invulnerable. And then he just runs into one pack that has something that disables his flask, or makes their cooldown even higher, and then he just instantly dies. I don't, that doesn't feel good. I don't like that. I think it's bad game design. But I'm not the game designer, so I'll put my hands in, I'll, let, I'll trust GGG, they know what they're doing. But to me, it just feels bad. It feels bad to build a build, stack all these levels of defenses, because you have so many levels you have to get, 
your spell suppression. I'm not going to go through the list. You have to checkbox all these defenses that you get off. And then when you do checkbox all these defenses, and you're like, cool, all my defenses are solid, you run into one mob who's like, guess what? All that shit you did? Nah, boy. I'm going to fuck it up. 